All right, this is my audience. I do. <laughs> All right, you guys can go now. <laughs> You're just this. Okay, thank you and good evening. My name is Shelby and tonight I will be talking about the value of communication on flight 30, 370 aftermath. I will talk about three uh, specific parts of the communication uh, effect that will be explored in this report. Firstly, the initial communication when flight 370 took place of the disappearance between the airline's flight and the controller. Secondly, the communication that occurred between Malaysia Airline and the hundreds of mass media that was reporting the story. Lastly, I will look into the communication from the families, at the families that lost loved ones and also how Malaysia Airline communicated with them. Okay, so I will go into the clush, the first wave's communication of Flight 370, the clusters of confusion. There is so much going on between the hundreds of mass media that is taking place along with Malaysia's airline reps talking about it, and then the loved ones trying to get information and figuring out what exactly happened, how did this disappearance happen, and there were so many different reasons they came up with that the confusions of what really happened was just a big cluster of nonsense, basically. Now, the communication of Malaysia Airlines was very brief, very distinct, not to the point, not exactly what we expected. I also feel like the reason why was because they didn't want to have anything look bad upon them, then lose customers, then get a lawsuit on their hands of any sort. Now, here's an example. I found an article that said that stated on the day of the flight disappeared, Malaysia officials offered very little information beyond the fact that there was no distress ca called from the plane. And this was from Weiner and Bronner, 2014, basically saying trying to air it all. It wasn't their plane that caused this disappearance. So trying to save their their company and try to make everything look a little bit better for their them so people don't go fully blaming Malaysia Airlines. Now I will go into talking about Malaysia Airlines communication. Malaysia Airlines contributed to the hill of misinformation from Hannah McKenzie and Yane in 2014 basically talked about how much misinformation they were giving. Basically, as I stated before, they were saying that this was a discost from their airline. Media came out saying a bunch of stuff that there was something wrong with the airline. It went from the pilot. It went from no fuel was left in the car in the plane, which is basically upon Malaysia Airlines. That, that's their fault. They are their plane distressed the cause of the disappearance. And then a report surface in June of 2014, pain of 2015 said, basically this is where they went about saying everything was not their fault and the media coming in, what media was saying is false, and what Malaysia Airline is saying, it reports what they're saying are true, 100%. And that communication, again, having the media in play with it made the confusions and the miscommunication oh, horrendous, basically. Now, the standards required by the National Air Transport Association Operational Safety Audit Program stated, According to Malaysia Airlines, MASS has already taken significant steps into, into improving safety in response to the loss of the MH370. So we see that the airline is still taking any type of hits, whatever they can do to make sure that people know that they are secure, they're looking more into things, they're making sure that their future planes are good to go so they don't, again, lose customers, lose their company. Now I will show you guys exactly where it took place the whereabouts of where they're expecting things to happen. They're expecting it to be about right here in the, where they lost, per se, the fuel is what they're saying right as, as a moment. Where they are thinking a general idea in the Indian Ocean exactly. Don't really have a general idea. So this is about what they were giving on information basically. Now I will go in to the communication to the families. The whereabouts of the plane was basically not informed 
to the people of the loved ones. They weren't really informed to anything. They spent months after months where in Australia trying to figure out where they can get information. They basically just want closure, and Malaysia Airlines was not giving it to them. And again, the media was not helping with that aspect. So as you can see, the lack of communication it got the loved ones pretty, pretty upset and angry. Here's an example. In an article that I came across said the lack of communication to the family members got out of hand. Many of the loved ones publicly disnounced the handle of the crisis. This is from Hannah, McKenzie, and Yang. In 2014, this article was there. So they're basically, hands are, they're done. They're tired of the lies. They're tired of the miscommunication. They're just, they're tired. They want answers. They want basically closure. At this point in time, you want to find the body, you want to have that more of a closure, but this is the only closure that you can get, and they just want to know what happened, what caused, so they can go home and tell their family what exactly happened, have a better grip and understanding. Now I will go over the summary. So I talked about the communication with the family and how Malaysia was not the best with it. I talked about the communications with mass media and how they handled it that way and the aftermath of everything that was going on. It's been one, over one and a half years since the disappearance, still nothing. And there's no common denominator at all with it. Nothing is coming in mutual with, with the Malaysia Airlines reps saying anything further or even stating anything further along with the media. And the family members are still asking questions, asking why, trying to figure out what is the issue so they have closure. Now, in an article in the U.S. Today, it stated not a single scrape of diverse has been found despite a nonstop search along the depths of the southern Indian Ocean, where authorities believe the airliner crashed after it ran out of fuel. And this was stated from Jason and McLaurin in 2015. So this is very recent as for the year that they had the year mark of the disappearance. So nothing is still being done. So thank you for your time and everything that you have. Any questions, please let me know. And now I need you guys to come here at the end. Good. Thank you. Very nice. All right, and then this is my audience again. Hey. All right. <laughs> Got everybody? Yeah. Bye.